everybody, my name is Jim with Full Moon Adventure Club and today we're going to be revisiting the Kodiak Solar Generator. I've had it about six months so we're going to dive into another review to see how it's been doing, what I use it for, and also show you some really big tests where I actually put it up against refrigerators, washers, dryers, and even air conditioners to really push this thing over the top and see what it can really do and give you uh, just basically my, my update on it and how it's been performing over the last six months. I have used it a ton, so I have a lot of stuff to get into. Let's start doing that right now. So the Kodiak Solar Generator, I have a really big in-depth review on this that I've moved to my new channel as well. And that's, uh, I'll put a link in the description below that'll take you over there that has all the technical specs, exactly how much it weighs, the battery types, absolutely every bit of information that you need to know about it in the description below. So I won't be diving into all the tech specs in this video, but it is available there. Um, first off, one of the main things that I love using this for is just camping and gatherings outside. It's perfect for all that. Um, I've taken this on, I don't even know how many camping trips over the summer, and it has done beautifully and changed pretty much everything about the way we camp. Now, as far as lighting goes at night, which is a big deal, I really love the lighting uh, options that you can have with this guy, just having it with you. Uh, here's a picture where we're actually using this to power the RV and all the other lights that you see in this picture. Uh, so everything is pretty much LEDs, but it's plugged right into my RV, so my batteries are not being affected. It's running the LED strip inside, the LED strip on the awning, a big light we had in the back for the grill, uh, all the base camp lights that are off in the background in the tree, and a little plug-in light kit for our hammock, our little uh, yeah hammock that's off on the right there. So it was powering pretty much everything there, and I did this for about five hours before I turned it off when we went to bed. 100 watt solar panel the next day completely charged it back up and we did that again the second night so it lasted perfectly all weekend um, i wouldn't have even needed the solar panel because it did we got nowhere close to draining that 90 amp hour lithium ion battery so it did great for that and uh one really huge thing that i love about having this guy that i never really thought of until it got really cold and we were camping up at chins lake which is at about 11,000 feet it's really high up there and it was pretty cold it even snowed when we got up there just a little bit when we first got up there um was was heat and usually uh say my girlfriend's very cold and i would have been cold that night because it was freezing so we each took a tent and i set up my tent and i used the uh, mr heater which is a great little heater but i used that inside and uh, for her i plugged in the kodiak solar generator to an electric blanket and that kept her super toasty warm the entire week. And I asked her about it and how it went. It was great. And in my tent, you know, I had that night, that big red glow. So it was kind of bright. And also you're using, you know, a gas appliance and a enclosed tent, which can make you nervous, but the Mr. Heater's pretty safe. And um, so we both were completely cozy. And I gotta admit, I don't think I'm gonna be using the Mr. Heater anymore for that kind of thing because it'll run that electric blanket and the electric blanket that we had uses almost no energy. It was like 15 watts, 20 watts, something like that and just a little twin size. But you could get a queen and I think they only use like 50 watts. And that, that generator will run that electric blanket easily for three nights, easy, without solar or anything else. And everybody was completely toasty and warm. I think that's awesome. It's completely quiet and you don't need any propane and everybody was snug as a bug. You could even have two of them if you wanted, one below and one on top. So that's the way I'm going from now on as far as staying warm. I'll take the Kodiak solar generator, hook up an electric blanket, and everybody is toasty warm. That's awesome. So even if it's snowing outside, you're gonna be good to go. That's one of my favorite things about camping with that guy. I also use it to charge up all of my um, electronics. I have a little fleet of RCs for cameras and just different camera angles, my drone, uh, solar lamps, speakers. I have a Bluetooth speaker that I that I haul all over the place and it takes a lot of power because it's nice and loud, which I like when we're out there and we want to, you know, jam some music. And it keeps everything topped up beautifully. You can charge it with a car, you can charge it with solar, or you can wait till you get home and charge it there. But it's been working beautifully for camping stuff and I always have lights and everybody always has their devices charged and everybody's always happy. All my camera gear, everything, I never have to worry about power while I'm camping which is great. Now with the RV, as far as the RV is concerned, I've been using it a ton, plugging the RV directly into that 30 amp uh, plug that it has right on the generator, which is awesome. A couple times I overextended my power usage on my batteries and we were listening to the radio and all this other stuff was going on and I drained them. And it was only like seven o'clock. We still had uh, 
a lot of night to go. So guess what I did? I pulled out the Kodiak solar generator and I plugged that right in and boom, we had all of our power restored. The converter was charging the batteries. All of our lights were on, turned back on the stereo, just a little bit quieter to save a little juice, but the entire RV came right back to life like nothing had ever happened. And otherwise I'd have had to have uh, started the front engine to like charge up my back battery so I could start the generator and that generator is blowing exhaust on everybody and it's being really loud at night. It's not fun. The Kodiak's completely quiet and the RV was just brought right back to life. So I think it's an amazing add-on uh, for the RV and I've used it a ton. It's great. So for that regard, it's, it's awesome. And especially if you have an RV um, and say you don't want to run the generator, your batteries are fine, but you want to be able to use all the outlets in the RV. It's just like being plugged into shore power. You plug it into that guy and then boom, all of a sudden all the outlets in your RV work. So your kids can plug in iPads or phones or whatever they want, charge stuff. And uh, every plug works and it's just like you're plugged into shore power. So I think that's an incredible thing to have that 30 amp plug on this guy. I've been using it a lot. Um, as far as big testing goes, that's another thing that I really love about this guy is that I've had so much fun really trying to push it over the top and test it against huge appliances. Okay, so we're talking refrigerators, washer, dryers, stuff like that. So let's talk about the washer dryer. Um, now with a dryer, if it's an electric dryer, this is not going to work for you. Electric dryers, all electric, usually run off 220 volts and this only goes, it has 110. Also, they use around 3,000 watts. Electric dryers are super power hungry, one of the biggest things in your home. So it won't work if you have an electric dryer, but here at my house, I have a gas dryer. So you just need the electric to turn the drum and uh, light up the pilot and get the gas going and all that stuff. So it did work for me because I have a gas dryer. Now on the washer, it ran it no problems, never struggled, did just fine. I did a huge load of laundry, just like topped it off with like tons of stuff and then started the cycle, ran it through beautifully and then threw everything into the dryer, started that up. It did start the drum and it got everything going and it ran through the full cycle. So I did an entire load of laundry which is awesome if, it, if your power's out or if it's an off-grid situation or if you just have an off-grid house that you're not hooked into the grid with. Very, very cool because it had no problems with the washer. So most people just use the washer and then hang their clothes out to dry. You're done, boom. And it used maybe 20% of, of the, uh, the battery capacity in the Kodiak. So that means you could probably do like, you know, three or four loads of laundry before you even had to plug it in. And with solar, it's probably gonna keep up with that just fine, because you can add up to 600 watts of solar to this guy. So, and you can charge it while it's being used. So, but I wanted to go ahead and use the dryer, so I did that as well. And after I did a full cycle of laundry in the washer and dryer, the Kodiak solar generator was at 60%. So it only used 40% of its energy doing an entire load. And that's crazy, if the power went out, I never would really consider being able to do laundry. But in my case, very, very easy to do. Now with uh, say the refrigerators, a lot of people wanna know how they do with refrigerators. Now, um, going off memory here on their site, I believe they say it'll run, you know, a, um, a normal sized refrigerator that's an Energy Star compliant with uh, light duty cycles, which means you're not opening and closing the door all the time. You're just letting it keep your food cold. So the compressor's working at 20%, um, that, it, that it would last like 33 hours, I believe. And let me double check that. Yeah, 19 cubic foot, 20% duty, Energy Star certified, 33 hours. Okay, so I didn't have that. My refrigerators are very old. So I went ahead and hooked it up to my incredibly old, like 80s beer fridge that's out in the garage and it is not Energy Star certified. The compressor dims the lights when it kicks on normally plugged into the house. So it is not energy efficient. I think it's a bit bigger than a 19 cubic foot and uh, we were using it all day to get drinks out of and food and blah, blah, blah. So the compressor is doing way more than 20% duty. And it lasted uh, 12 hours on the big guy, which is, which is impressive. It was pulling over 600 watts when the compressor go was going and it was going a lot because we were using that fridge all day. Practical use, practical applications. And so 12 hours was still very impressive. It'll get you through a power outage in most cases. And that's if you're opening and closing the door a lot keep it closed and you have a better fridge, probably gonna last a lot longer. Used it on my refrigerator in the main kitchen, which is a little bit newer, but still very old, over a decade old, not Energy Star certified, and uh, you know, a little around the same cubic square footage. And it actually made it, um, 
let's see, the first one was 12 hours. This one was uh, 15 and a half hours. So it did a little bit better, but again, we were using it all day. It was like, you know, during we had people over and people were opening and closing that guy all the time. So practical use, it lasted about 16 hours, which is still really good. So I have no doubt in my mind that if you had an energy efficient or energy star brand new fridge and you didn't open and close it like crazy because it's a power outage, I have no doubt that you could probably get up around that 30 uh, hour mark, which is very, very cool in a, in a power outage. So um, what else? Also, we did the washer dryer. We covered the um, refrigerators. Also, uh, I have another video on this. I had it run air conditioners. I tested it on a 5,000 BTU air conditioner. I have a, I have a test of, of a video of me doing that. I'll put a link down in the description below if you wanna go check that out or after this video is done playing. Very, very cool test. It ran that 5,000 BTU AC for like two hours by itself with no solar, not plugged in. That was crazy cool. I also hooked it up to my RV air conditioner, which is a 15,000 BTU Dometic uh, air conditioner. And it ran it just fine for about 30 minutes and I shut everything down just to make sure I didn't like push anything too hard or damage my components, but it did it, which is crazy. And if you wanna click the other video that's down below that takes you over to all the technical specs about the battery and the inverter and everything else, I also show you a lot of stuff where I hook it up to RVs to run microwaves. And uh, I even set up a test where I run two fans, the base camp LED lights, two battery chargers, a, um, a huge laptop, my cell phone, a solar lamp, uh, also my 60 inch flat screen TV, two cordless power drills and a uh, giant wet dry vac all at the same time and it handles all that stuff fine. And nothing's ever damaged because it's a pure sine wave inverter, which is awesome. Uh, as far as power outages at the home goes, we've had two power outages here since I've had it. And I was super excited when it happened because I was like, here it is. Here's my chance to use the Kodiak for an actual power outage. And it was great what, what, what everything we were able to set up during the power outage, we really didn't care at all. And I even had internet because what I did is I went downstairs, I ran an extension cord down there and plugged in my modem and my router. And so we had internet. We did have internet even though it was a power outage. We had, we had fast speed internet throughout the entire house. And I also had uh, hooked up a laptop, a TV, a lamp, and everybody had their little iPods and phones and stuff plugged in. And we also had a speaker going for music. So we had absolutely all those comforts. I didn't use it for the fridge or anything else because I knew it'd probably be back on in like four or five hours and we just didn't open the fridge. But uh, I could have easily if I needed to, but we just wanted to do that stuff just to make it kind of fun and see what all we could get, you know, back to normalcy during the power outage. And it was tons of fun. We used all that stuff for like five hours and it was at like 60 to 50%. So we could have easily done that all night and then I could have charged it back up uh, with solar the next day, which is awesome. So we wouldn't have been worried about anything at all. And uh, if the power outage continued to go, we'd probably switch that over to the fridge and add a bunch more solar. But I'm very confident that this, this guy would be perfect for any off-grid situation or power outages. It was just fantastic. As far as cons go, I've been trying to think about things that I would really want to change or things I don't like about this unit so I could tell you so it doesn't just seem like I'm just in love with everything about it. But to be honest, I kind of am. Uh, negative things that I guess I would change is the USBs. It has four USB connections in the front. I wish those were powered directly off the battery. You do have to turn on the unit with the inverter for those to become active. I think it would be better just to have the USBs powered all the time, but it's really not a big deal. It runs completely silently with the inverter on. Um, the inverter uses like 10 watts while it's running, which is very negligible. Not going to be a big deal, but I wish those were connected directly. I think it makes more sense. Um, other than that, what was the other thing? I had one more thing that I wish it could do. Oh yes, um, I wish you could, it had both solar input charging ports could charge at the same time. So it has one port that'll charge 600 watts of solar, the big guys, real big connection up top. And then it has a smaller connection down below that you can plug in the Predator panels or when you're charging it off your, uh, your uh, home adapter, the AC adapter, that plugs in there and it handles a less amount of solar current, but uh, still that's the way you charge it usually when you're using the house and uh, smaller panels, stuff like that. I wish both of those could charge at the same time, but I'm pretty sure there's a switch, so you're either running off the big guy or the little charge cable. And uh, I wish you could do both, that'd be kind of cool. Just for energy, for the future reference, I think you should fix those two things. But man, neither one of them are a deal breaker at all, and uh, 
I, I can't think of anything else negative about this guy. I've absolutely loved using it for pretty much every situation. And I pull it out for even small, silly little things. My, my buddy needs his cell phone charged and we're all sitting outside. I'll just bring out the Kodiak, sit it on the table and say, plug it in. We have lights going for cards and uh, I just take it everywhere with me and use it for any kind of silly little thing that I can possibly imagine. I sent it with my sister going up to an off-grid cabin that didn't have electricity. They used it for the water pump for the cistern and they used it for running their lights and the lamps and the music. It's just great. So I wanted to go over all that stuff. I have absolutely nothing bad to say about this thing six months in. I'll let you guys know in a year if anything's changed. But so far, if you if you need anything like this and uh, you're, you're in the market for one, this is absolutely the one I'd recommend. I've tried four other other solar generators and uh, they went back. They went back to the store. They're just, they're too heavy or um, they just don't have the same functionality that this guy has at 20 pounds with everything that'll do and all the crazy stuff that I've had it run, washers, dryers, and air conditioners. Nothing else is even close as far as I can tell so far. So um, if you wanna save 20% on this guy, Energy is still giving me that coupon for 20% off. Anything you buy when you click the link down below, um, accessories or solar panels or the Energy Kodiak itself, uh, you'll save 20%, which is hundreds of dollars off this guy. So that's very nice of them to continue doing for me. And um, if you want to call in and just use the phone and call energy and order whatever you want, you can use the coupon code word adventure. And that will also get you 20% off everything. And they'll know that it came from me. So hopefully they'll keep sending me fun stuff to test and share with you guys. Cause definitely uh, I'm definitely enjoying uh, the generator so far. So I think that about covers it for the six month in review and all the weird, crazy, big stuff I've been testing on it. So I'll keep testing it and we'll see how far we can push this guy. My name is Jim with Full Moon Adventure Club. If this video helped you out, please like, share, sub and subscribe. And until the next video, I just wanted to say thanks so much for watching and happy camping.